Amen. Praise God for our youth. Amen. Our children for blessing us. Amen. Regardless of your age, that should be everybody's testimony. Amen. That I want King Jesus and I want him now. Amen. We welcome you to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. We thank God for all of you sharing with us on today. We also want to welcome our viewers on streaming live uh, to this worship service on today. We're so excited to be here, to be here alive and well, that God woke us up and started us on our way, amen. And that we are here to worship him and worship him in spirit and in truth, amen, amen. Uh, today is just a great day. We've uh, been challenged and we've been preaching uh, to the mind, amen, uh, focusing our attention on the mind. So uh, for the next few weeks, we're just going to be really dealing with thinking for yourself. My mind is made of talking in order for us to examine our own minds, amen? Amen, amen, amen. There's a word from the Lord that can be found in Mark chapter number 5, verses 1 through 15. Verses 1 through 15. Mark chapter number 5. Mark chapter 5. Where actually you stand for the reading of God's word. Once again, we thank our music ministry, our choir. We thank Brother Michael Williams for helping us and assisting us in this season. Amen. Thank God for both of them on today. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. When you have it, please say amen. amen. I'll read it rather swiftly and, and let us hear what God is saying to us on today. Starting at verse 1, and there you find these words. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. But he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all of the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked into the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country that they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And he had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid if you haven't already done so turn to the person standing next to you greet him with a nice smile and tell him it's good to see you free amen turn to somebody else and just simply tell him it's good to see you are free amen you may be sitting for the next few moments i want to speak from the subject unresolved issues unresolved issues chapter 5 is the continuation of the narrative of chapter 4 of course chapter 4 we see where Jesus is interacting with his disciples and he is sharing with his disciples the importance of them going forward and them crossing over onto the other side and Jesus begins to get the disciples and gather them and put them in the boat and they launch out and in the midst of them crossing over to the other side, the Bible says that there was a great storm 
and that great storm arose and the winds and the rains and the waves beat up against this ship that it was now full. There was many tense moments on this ship. There were many moments when the individuals did not even think that they were going to make it to the other side. There were moments when they went out and even shook Jesus and said, Jesus, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And Jesus arose, awakened from his sleep, and he rebuked the winds, the waters, and the waves, and said, Peace be still. It was in that moment that there was a stillness, there was a calmness that came to those who were struggling to, touch, to trust God in the midst of tension. Now, as they continued their voyage, as their cruise was coming to an end, they land in chapter number five. And the Bible says, and they came over to the other side, in the sea, in the country of the Gadarenes. When we begin to examine this word, Gadarenes, we begin to realize that this term Gadarenes, that these individuals, the Rings, the Gadarenes, are descendants of the tribe called the Gad that Gad being part of the 12 tribes of Israel who walked with Moses and who Moses led from faith to faith. And then one day God called Moses home, buried Moses with his own hands, anointed Joshua and appointed him in Joshua chapter one. And he said unto him, now that my, Moses service, uh, my servant Moses is dead, Joshua lead my people into the promised land. It is at this time that Joshua now takes the reins and he begins to lead the 12 tribes of Israel. And as he continues what God has purposed him to do, he's moving them forward towards the promise of God. As they begin to cross the Jordan, they begin to move and continue to get close to this land that is flowing with milk and honey. The tribe of Gad begins to become comfortable. My brothers and sisters, they saw that they needed certain things because Gad was the largest tribe of all of the tribes of Israel. They saw this massive piece of property that was by this ocean side. It was a place that was so beautiful to them. It was a place that they said, we could just rest here and be comfortable right here. It was not for their purpose to rest by the seaside, but Joshua had already given them instructions and had given them purpose to move forward into the promised land. Joshua even had to go back and begin to dialogue with the leaders of the tribe of Gad to tell them that this is not our place, that we ought to move forward. We ought to go forward into the promises of God. Gad made an agreement, the tribes of Gad made an agreement with Joshua and they decided to move forward and go across a couple of more miles and go across a couple of more situations and go across and through a couple of more battles. But the minute the, minute the battles were won, the minute victory had been found, Gad came together and they said, we have a place where we can rest and stay forever. Even though they went a peace with Joshua, it was not the place where they were supposed to stop. They were supposed to continue in the way of the Lord. Gad, in their own way, in their own mind, decided to go back to the seaside, take up all of this beautiful territory, and say, this is the place where we want to be, instead of this is the place where God wants us to be. You often hear me say it, and I say it over and over again, saints and family, that the worst place to be is where God used to be. The worst place to stay is where God is no longer. As we are moving from faith to faith and from week to week, and we're following God along the way, we need to get up every day and ask ourselves and ask God, God, am I where I'm supposed to be? Gad had made a great decision. Gad had secured beachside property. They had secured property with sand. They had secured property where they would see the beautiful fish. They had secured property where they would see all of the fowls of the airs coming in and out. And it was there where they could fish and they could sit at the seaside and just enjoy life. Don't you wish you were there right now? 19 degrees tomorrow. Don't you wish you were there now? <laughs> Where you were just basking in the sun with the beautiful water, the beautiful rays. And that's what Gad did. They decided to stay right there. 
Grass was greener. Property was beautiful. But it wasn't the place where God wanted them to be. So because now the rest of the 12 tribes or the rest of the tribes are moving with God, you have to remember now that the tribes also had a tribe called the tribe of Levi and this priestly tribe. And that priestly tribe would hold something called the Ark of the Covenant. And that Ark of the Covenant was representation of the presence of God. So with Gad staying by, behind by this beautiful seaside, and the ark of God, along with the other tra twelve tri the other tribes, along with their leader Joshua, moving to the place God wants them to be. Over time, even though Gad had a beautiful place, they were missing the presence of God. Don't ever settle for beauty and be out of the will of God. Don't ever settle for physical revelation of what make me feel good and then be absent from being connected to the spiritual revelation of walking with God. So over time now, we see out of the Old Testament that God settled, but life went on. So now in Mark chapter 5, when Jesus crosses over with his 12 disciples, the first place he enters into the land of the Gadarenes. Jesus, the one who is a life giver, enters the land of the Gadarenes, which is now called a necropolis, which means the city of the dead. The Jesus of life is entering the place, the city of the dead. Now this, my brothers and sisters, is the beginning of how Jesus shows that he has the power to calm your storms. In chapter number four, we see Jesus calming the storm that's on the outside. But in chapter number five, we now see Jesus calming the storm, which is the hardest storm to calm, which is on the inside. See, see, it's easy for us to sit back because if it's snow tomorrow, you'll know it's snowing. <laughs> yeah. If it rain tomorrow, you can step out and you can see the rain. If it's sunshining tomorrow, you can see the sunshine, but you can't always see the storms that are going on on the inside. I wish I had some help here. You can't always see behind a smile the real life of frowns that's on the backside. You can't always see behind the firm handshake that's saying bless you pastor when people are walking around with their minds and their life that is in an uproar. All of us know how to smile when we hurt. The question is, is that a temporary hurt or a hurt that's been with us for a while. Yeah, Jesus dealt with this issue in chapter number four. He said, peace be still to the outside elements. Yeah. And in chapter number five, he's now dealing with this gathering demoniac. Yeah. This one who has been living outside of the presence and outside of having access to God for years and years and years. Yeah. And my brother and sister, when yeah. we see the portrait of what's going on in this passage of scripture, it really bogs down, it really comes down to two words, unresolved issues. Can I drop this on you? All of us in here have some unresolved issues. And if you don't think you do, that is your unresolved issue. <laughs> All of us in here have some things that have happened in our past. Now watch this. Some of it we brought of ourselves. And some of it was situations where we were just victims of happenstance and circumstance that we had nothing to do. But it has impacted us from years ago to where we are now. People mean for no reason at all. No one did anything to you. But your mom and daddy were mean. <laughs> and that's the way you think it's supposed to be. I'm just supposed to be mean. Folks, folks snappy at you. You're not a snappy person. But you always saw mama and grandmother and granddaddy and dad that every time they were uncomfortable, they hollered fuss and they would fight. 
You're really a loving and genuine person. But there are some unresolved issues because in your mind, if mom and daddy did it, it must be right. And that's not always true. Preach Reverend Warner. And there are things that we do even now that do not honor God, but because we saw it in our own families, we think is it acceptable. Sometimes we have to tear people down in order to build ourselves up. No, you don't. <laughs> There's enough pie for everybody to get at least one piece. <laughs> we should be builders. We should be encouragers. You don't have to put people down in order to build yourself up. But when we've seen that and when we've heard that, there are people right here that don't even know how to love without arguing. Don't look to the side, just look straight. <laughs> That we don't even know how to talk and we don't know how to laugh. We think that everything has to end in an argument. I'm the man, I'm going to get a last word. Because we saw that's what daddy did. I know I'm preaching, amen, somebody. <laughs> and we have to react in a manner that we saw our forefathers and our foremothers and, and people of past. And here we are 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. And we act the same way our parents did and our grandparents and the people of influence. And we don't even know why we act like that. You've been on seven jobs and you still blaming the employer. And you're telling everybody they treating me wrong and they ain't fair and this and that. This job number seven. When are you gonna say, wait a minute, it might be. Unresolved issues, listen carefully, always make you look at others and never look in the mirror at yourself. This situation that we see right here, this gathering demoniac did not even bring this on himself. He was not even born. These were decisions his ancestors made that now is being played out in his life in chapter number five. He didn't know that they made a collective decision not to go with God. Even after God had delivered them from Pharaoh in the Red Sea and he fed them by ma with manna and bread. And you know what manna is, manna is what is it? <laughs> We don't even know what it is. It's just coming from heaven and it's feeding them. He clothed them for 40 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And here they are making this decision. And now this decision that his ancestor made is now impacting him today. I wonder how many of us are being impacted right now on decisions we had nothing to do with. Things that happened years ago that is impacting you right now from seeing things and seeing people and embracing relationships and taking advantage of opportunities and enjoying this thing called life. I made up about 10 years ago that I'm only gonna get this life one time. Uh, I, I've had Reverend Jones probably about a hundred funerals in these 20 years. And what I realized is that everybody I laid to rest is still there. They're not going to come back and to Jesus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I decided about 10 years ago that if this is the only one I'm going to get, I'm going to enjoy to the best of my ability. That means I have to deal with the unresolved issues that are in my own life. And the reality is, we all family. Let's come close. Come on, come on. It's just us, us family talking. Every one of us in here has some issues that deal with us today. Jesus now comes on the scene. He interacts with this young man, this man who has these unresolved issues. 
if you're writing today, the first thing I want to, to help you with when you're trying to deal with unresolved issues is, is understand your background. Yeah. This man was bound by his background. His background had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with a decision that the tribe of Gad made years ago. Secondly, he was bound by his borders. Look at verse number two and three. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. All he could see was where he was. He had no desire to see anything else. He was stuck for this moment in the borders of his tomb. The neighborhood I grew up in, and you, you know it, I was kind of a rough neighborhood, and one of the things that dad always did for us, he always took us on vacations. He allowed us to see that there was life outside of the borders we lived in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I was talking to somebody one day, and they said, oh, you from Louisiana? I said, yeah. And they said, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Well, it's okay. It's just, we just feel sorry for you. I'm like, you feel sorry for me because you've never been to Louisiana. <laughs> if you ever go and really enjoy all of what Louisiana has thought, you would be surprised at what you can get living, especially the best food in the world. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Look, there, is, there are things you can experience in the next neighborhood over, in the next few blocks down the street, but you have to be willing to get out of the borders that you are trapped in so you can see life differently. He was bound in his borders. Now watch this. Because all he saw were his borders, then how his borders were actually impacted how he behaved. See, unresolved issues. He was bound by his background. He was bound by his borders. But watch this. He was bound by his behavior. Look at verses 4 and 5. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stone. See, the only place he could act like this was in the tombs. See, my brothers and sisters, when you are dealing with unresolved issues and you're trying to continue in the path in which God has for you, there are just going to be times where you have to check your behavior. You have to ask yourself, am I behaving appropriately? Can I do this and remain married? Can I do this and we still be friends? Can I do this and still be part of this? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And many times when we have cemetery mindset, we can never adjust our behavior. See, there are some things that you can do that is completely acceptable based on where you are. You know, preachers, uh, you know, I don't speak a lot of different languages, but one thing about preachers, we have to be bilingual. Uh, that's the sermon we preach, and then that's the interaction we have with everybody else. Because see, you wouldn't want me to be up here talking to you like I talk to my friend. What's up, dog? How you doing, man? What, you know, what, and y'all be like, what is he talking about? <laughs> so all of us understand, and, and then you have the, the house you, and then you have the employer, you. Oh, that, that's, a, that's a way you conduct yourself at home. I, I hope it's different. Amen. And there's a way you conduct yourself uh, on your job. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Look, look, that's the homebody you, and then that's the Sunday morning true light you. Uh, I, I know that's different. Amen. <laughs> We say amen at the right place. We say hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, amen. And so we understand that behavior is acceptable in some places and it may not be acceptable in others. Watch this. This man was totally comfortable taking stones and cutting himself all night long and hollering and screaming in the tombs. And it was acceptable there. That behavior was okay. But he could not be what God wanted him to be with cemetery behavior. 
Am I making sense, anybody? My brothers and sisters, when we're dealing with unresolved issues, we have to be able to examine us where we are. Examine you. Be honest with you. You know, we always used to be told, it's not good for you to talk to yourself. And then other people say, yeah, it's not good for you to talk to yourself and answer yourself. Look, whatever you got to do, whatever you have to do to talk to you, you can pick up the phone call and dial your own number. But sometimes you got to talk to you so you can hear you, so you can become a better you. Amen, somebody. There are times you may pull up on side of me at a red light and I am having a full-blown conversation. And you'll say, well, Sister Warner must be in the passenger seat. And you'll pull up waving and you'll be like, oh, Lord, he lost it. You have to learn how to talk it out of you so God can then speak to your heart. Speak to my heart, sweet yeah. Jesus. Speak to my heart and speak to my mind so I can adjust my life to honor you in every way possible. His actions, he could only act that way in the cemetery. There are certain actions he could not demonstrate if he was going to remove himself from those borders. Now watch what happens here in the text. Jesus now he has a scheduled encounter. Uh, we just heard the preacher in his prayer say, you're not here by accident. By divine direction and providence, God sent you this way. Jesus now enters into the land of Gadara to deal with this gathering demonic by divine schedule. At the right time, when he was tired of living the way he was, Jesus came his way. Now watch this. In verse 5 and 6, we see what's going on. And when Jesus shows up, listen to the word. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, afar off, the Bible says he ran and he worshipped him. It wasn't the demon that worshipped him. It was this man who was created. Uh, I think it's the Imagio Dei. That, that means I'm created in the very image of God. And when he, creation, recognized the person who was part of him being created... He ran to him and he worshipped him because yes, that was part of him that was not right with God, but that was another part of him that had a desire to walk with God. All of us in here, we're dealing with that duality all the time. That duality is, that's part of us that is connected to sin and then there's another part of us that's saying, Savior, do not pass me by, Savior. While on others thou art called, and do not pass me by. There is part of us that is crying out to God as saying, do not pass me by. And so now we see this man, this, this gathering demoniac. He, we, we see this, this bipolar, if you will, this, this knowing that he's not right, but then a desire for him to get right. And now watch this. Knowing not right, desire to get right, and then watch this. That was a deliberate action that he forced himself to get to the feet of Jesus. Boy, that's good preaching right there. <laughs> no matter what was going on in his mind, just like in the lady's mind last week, the woman who had the issue of blood, as you can see, Jesus was passing by and both of them had the same mindset. If I can just get to the foot of Jesus Christ, my life will no longer be the same. My brothers and sisters, we have to understand that all of us are dealing with this duality in us. As a part of us that struggles, that, 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 that we, we don't want to be this way, but, but it's so easy, it's comfortable. And then as a part of us that won't, that's crying out and hungering for righteousness and, and to be with God. And the only thing that makes the difference of which way we will go is our perception and our mindset of really how bad do we want to change. 
brothers and sisters, in order for us to maximize and get the best out of this, listen, one life that God gives you on this side, how bad do you want it? How bad are you willing to get to the presence of Jesus? Who are you willing to leave behind? Who, who are you willing to grab and, I love you, but I got to go with Jesus. Who are you willing to say, we've been walking it together for 20 years, but God is saying, I want a different walk for your life. Who are you willing? What are you willing? Why? What is it that you really need to just say for 2018? It's going to take every ounce of energy I have, but I'm going to put it to the side so I can pick up Jesus in my life. All of us have that, that thing, that, that, that itch that we just can't scratch. Yeah. Yeah. This man sees Jesus and he runs and he worships Jesus. Yeah. He's, he's bound by his background. He's bound by his borders. He's bound by his behavior. But he's also bifocal in the midst of where he is. He sees where he is, but he also sees where he wants to be. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, let me see if I get this quote right. It's been a while since I said it. Uh, they asked the question to Harriet Tubman, the one lady who was blind, and I think it was something like this. I'd rather uh, uh, have eyes and no sight than to have, uh, I'd rather have, uh, 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 let me see, it. I I'd rather have this and that. I'd rather have uh, vision with no sight. In other words, there's too many times we can see, but we still don't see. Yeah. And I'd rather be blind and have vision than to have eyes with sight but still can't see. I, it's going to come to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and she will say, I'm blind, but I still have vision. I'm blind, but I still have sight. Because my vision comes from not by what I can see, but what I can hear. And who's speaking to me has eyes for me to make sure it's directing me to where he wants me to be. This man gave it up. He ran and he worshiped Jesus. Now he's dealing with the duality and the challenge that's on the inside. Look at what he says in verse number seven. He worshiped him at the end of verse number six and he cried with a loud voice and he said, what have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. The man who falls down to worship is the man that is part of God's creation. The man that speaks is the demon that's on the inside. See, he's not speaking to Jesus because he wants to really interact and connect with Jesus. He's speaking to Jesus selfishly to bind Jesus by his own word because he is not a tormentor that you do not interfere with the work I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Now look, I want, you, I want you to see this. Look at how smooth Satan is. Yeah. Satan is so smooth that he bound Jesus. He binds him by the word of God. Yeah. 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 So that means all y'all gonna be in Bible studies, right? Yeah. <laughs> See, see, you have to know the word of God in order to deal with Satan because Satan knows the word of God. He even tells Jesus, you cannot torment me because that is in your word. Yeah. We're dealing with this spirit now, this duality, this, this bipolar issue that is going on in this man who Jesus is trying to free. He's dealing with this issue and he's struggling and we hear the man, the precious man speak, and then we have this demon speaking. We have this demon who is speaking truth, but we already know demons lie. Yeah. So how do you handle a demon, a lying spirit that's temporarily telling the truth? That's why you have to be so in tune with what God is doing that you always know even if it comes from Satan, it's still going to be a lie. It may be a temporary truth, but if you keep letting it go, eventually Satan is going to be who he is. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and his nature will never change. Now watch this. He talks to him, and he says, I adjure thee by God, torment me not. So look at what happens now. So verse number eight, for he said unto him, come out of thy man, thy unclean spirit. Now this is Jesus 
speaking to the Gadarene demoniac. Now, this is key. He's talking to the demon on the inside. But the man on the outside doesn't know what the conversation is between Jesus and the demon. <laughs> see, see, that's why when we pray, we sign our prayers in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says we sometimes don't know how to pray. So we pray and we give it to God and we ask things like this. God, you know what I need. God, you know what's best for me. Matter of fact, there's one passage that talks about praying in the spirit where the mind of the spirit then takes utterance and groans before the Father. Oh, that's next level ministry there. I'm trying to help you. And then it speaks to them in the spirit, which means there are things that are going on in the spirit realm that I am able to comprehend in my own physical realm. So Jesus is talking to the Gadarene demonic, but he's not speaking to the man. He's speaking to the demon on the inside. And as he's dealing with him, he's saying, why are you doing this to me? Matter of fact, what is your name? Listen to the conversation. He says, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, the term Legion is a military term. And, and that's no distinct number, but, but, but they, it's connected to the Roman uh, government, the Roman mili uh, uh, military, and it would be anywhere between five to 9,000. So, so don't, don't quote me direct on that, amen. Don't send me an email this week. It's, it's between five or 9,000, amen. And, and, and so with that, it lets me know, I want you to think now, I want you to think, what about this man that Satan would exhaust five to nine thousand demons yeah. to mess this man up. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I started understanding how gifted and talented we are yeah. as the body of Christ. Yeah. See, whenever Satan begins to upset your life, I know you're going to take a step back and you'll be like, oh, look at Satan again. But you actually st should start celebrating because when Satan gets into your way, it's a sign that God has something for you to do. And there's something on the inside that Satan don't want to come out of you. So every time Satan messes with you, you should say, thank you, God, because now you are reminded me just how gifted I really am see anybody in here has ever had to pray Satan out of your life it's because you're gifted you are anointed you have purpose and Satan doesn't want that purpose to be fulfilled I want you to hear me because some of you still looking at me like you're not getting look Satan is so afraid of you that he sends 5,000 demons to mess you up. Look at your neighbor and say, I must be bad. <laughs> 5,000 to make sure that you don't become the man you're supposed to be, brothers. And you don't supposed to become the women of God. You're supposed to be sisters. And we don't supposed to become the beacon like church we're supposed to be. That man, that demon, that low down dirty Satan exhausts 5,000 of his military group for one old little you? Boy, you should walk out of here today saying, I know I'm something. I got power on the inside. I got some power in me that God can do something great in me. All I have to do is get connected to my purpose. He says, what is your name? Legion, for we are many. And then the legion and God, Jesus, begin to have this dialogue. The legion is steady telling him, do not torment me. And, and, and Jesus is saying, I got to pull you out of him. And, and this is what the demon is saying. Look, okay, if you pull us out, don't destroy us. Because you can, because you're Jesus. Give us leave to go somewhere else. Now, when you're bound by backgrounds and bound by your borders and behavior and you become bifocal to see who you are, who Jesus is and where you want to be, 
then you're also bound for something else. And that last thing is you're bound for a breakthrough. Yeah. This man had been in a situation in his life yes. that he had no control over. Yeah. He did not bring it upon himself. When he showed up into that life and, 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 and the Gadara Gadder, uh, community, they were without the presence of God. Yeah. And whenever you were out the presence of God, your behavior, your identity begins to become lost. Yeah. So now in verses 12, 13, listen. Now there was a near unto the mountains a great herd of swine, 11 and 12. And all of the devils, the demons, they asked him saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and they entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And there were about 2,000 and they choked in the sea. Verse 14, and they that fed the swine fled into the city and into the country. And they went into the sea. And they went out to see what it, or what it was that was done. Now listen to this. I want to just get you to think a little bit. This gathering demoniac had been living with five to nine thousand demons for years. He was in the tomb cutting and screaming, hollering for years. They would try to bind him with fetters and chains for years. And he was in that situation. But when those demons came out of him, and they fill the swine. God's greatest creation is man. One of his lesser creations is pigs. Man lived for de with demons for years. The pigs would live with demons for one minute. I'm right there in the book. Why y'all looking at me? It says, and they ran off the cliff and committed pig side. <laughs> Now, now, they ain't in there. I'm done on them. They dove into the water and they choked because they refused to live with something as the most unclean animals. They said, yes, we're unclean, but we're not going to be infected by an unclean spirit. Why would a pig commit pig side? <laughs> Drown with demons and the man would live with them. My brothers and sisters, all of us in here are under the constant onslaught of demons. They are trying to attack our bodies. They are trying to attack our minds. They're trying to make you think you're sick when you're not. They're trying to make you think everything is well when it's not. <laughs> they want to confuse you. They want you to think that Sunday is Monday and they want you to forget to come to church. They don't want you in an environment where the word is going for. They want you to be full of excuses of why we can't instead of why we can. We want to, they, I mean, demons will put everything in your way to create a stumbling block for you to grow in God's word. Demons will make you, make you think people like you who don't even know you. They will make you think people dislike you who not even talking about you. Demons will make you think all kinds of things. Demons will make you think you ugly when you're beautiful. Demons will make you try to lose faith in who you are, faith in who God is, where you can live a life where your life is equivalent to being in a cemetery. Look at your neighbor and say, no cemetery life here. God gave me permission to live a life 
of abundance, a life with a good mind. I have permission to be healthy. I have permission to be an honorable husband and man. I have permission to raise my children in the admonition of the Lord. I have permission to make mistakes and go to the throne of grace and ask God to forgive me of my statements. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I have permission to do things and honor him in every way possible. Satan, you're not going to trick me. When I went to bed last night, God was my daddy. When I got up this morning, God was my dad. On my way to church, Jesus is still my big brother. I still have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I still have goodness and mercy behind me. I still have angels watching over me, Satan. And no matter what comes up my way, I'm not going to glorify you over glorifying my Father which is in heaven. And when you say no to Satan, and yes to God demons start to tremble demons don't like you when you come to church demons don't like you when you say I'm going to pray about it demons don't like you when you say I'm going to love even when you hurt and I want to show you something else because this is our month of thinking and challenging our mind. And I, want, I want you to think about this. Look at what happens in verse 14 and 15. And this is my last close. Amen. And they that fed the swine fled into the city in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done. Verse 15. And they come to Jesus seeing him, the gathering demoniac, that was possessed with the devil and had the legion, listen, sitting and clothed in his right mind, listen, and they were afraid. I want, you, I, want you to, I want you to get this now. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. It didn't say they were afraid when he was in the cemetery acting crazy. But they became afraid when he was sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. I want you to think about that. How is it that there's a strand of, of, of society that shuns Michelle Obama? and celebrates Olivia Pohl from Scandal. Both of them had relationships with the president, but Michelle's were legitimate, amen. And Olivia Pohl's illegitimate. Why is it that we can celebrate Olivia Pohl? Get them, girl. What has happened where we are afraid of people who are clothed and in their right mind? How is it that we shun Oprah Winfrey and we celebrate Nene from Atlanta Housewives? What has happened to our society where that which is honorable, that which is with integrity, we don't want that anymore. We push it to the side. And we'll take any old thing over here just to say, I feel connected. Yeah. Yeah. Our ancestors, regardless to, to what skin color you are, our ancestors worked hard for us to be able to get to a better place. Yeah. Not only in our ability to earn money, but our ability to gain education yeah. and knowledge, our ability to live at a better life. And some strands of our society, they take shots at those of you who took opportunities to make your life better. My mother would take us back to the place where our family grew. And my dad would take us back from the place where our family uh, uh, was born. And we grew in Natchez, Mississippi. And he showed the path of how we came from Natchez to the area down the Mississippi in a little small town called Irvinville, Louisiana. And we would see the liberty houses with all of the grass. And we would see the outhouses because there was no running water. Okay, y'all won't act like you've been in Denver all your life. Amen. 
And he would show us the stuff they used to do and the things I have no idea. Because when I get up in the morning, I wake up in the bed made out of cotton. I didn't have to go out and pick cotton. And I would put on nice cotton clothes. And I would put on shoes that were made with cotton. Didn't graduate to leather shoes. And would have cotton books. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I would go out and do things and come back in. Because our forefathers and mothers, whether we were slaves, whether we were immigrants, immigrants came here for a better life. It doesn't matter. Why now that is there a strand of our society that embrace embrace a lack of integrity and then in question those who demonstrate righteous honorable living and integrity listen I'm done when he was clothed and in his right mind they were afraid I want to help some of you I'm going to help you get through this week and get through the rest of your life. People are sometimes most afraid of you when you're trying to do things the right way. See our young men who we see, I was in Walmart, the young man's pants were down at his ankle. He holding up his pants. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? But, 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 let me, can I help you? He will never pull his pants up until he pull his mind up. When the mind comes up, the pant will come up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We can't, we, we can't ostracize our young girls who wear skirts way up here. When you pull their mind up, their dresses will become longer. Ah, y'all need to say amen. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. It will never happen until we invest in resetting the standard. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We used to look at stories like Good Times and the Jeffersons and we saw you could be happy if you were in the ghetto and you could be happy if you was in a penthouse. We used to see uh, 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 the Huxtables and we used to see a different world now where we saw people moving and education and, and honorable things and now our most watched TV shows is Scandal, Empire and Power. What is going on? We've lost focus. We give ratings to garbage so Hollywood is going to keep producing garbage. When we start giving ratings to holistic things and holy things of God, watch what Hollywood do. They're going to start making more movies and TVs that honor family values. Hollywood simply say this, if you want to hear of a cemetery mind, we're going to put cemetery tra a, a trash on TV. At the church I used to pastor, the Bible study was on Thursday. We had a great Bible study class until scandal came. <laughs> Our Bible study dwindled. I'm getting text messages from leaders. Pastor, got to catch scandal tonight. Not even realizing that Satan is using what you see to slowly start transitioning your mind to make you believe that things that are not honorable of God is acceptable in the sight of God. Look at your name and tell him ain't no scandal here. It's nothing but Christ, him crucified, and that is my standard. My brothers and sisters, as I close today, I know the sermon was a little bit long, but I had to get it out today. All of us have unresolved issues. Listen carefully. All of us have unresolved issues. All of us. I give you permission this year that if it's somebody who hurt you in the past that has created that unresolved issue today, take them and that issue to the feet of Jesus. 
If it's something you did that created an unresolved issue, first of all, forgive yourself. Take that to the Father and ask God to forgive you and to clear your mind, to clear your heart so you can continue to do the things you need to do. And watch how God will take things of the past and use those things of the past to start positioning you and prospering you in everything in your life. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about having a prosperous mind. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about having peace in your heart. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about being able to love and love freely again without worrying about if your heart will be crushed. My brothers and sisters, and when we see somebody who God has forgiven, now this is for the outsiders, looking at that person, we then have to say, God, Thank you for forgiving my brother and sister. And then we as men and women of God cannot hold things over their heads that they have done in the past. If God has forgiven them and they have forgiven themselves, then we also must forgive our brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? Unresolved issues can be resolved when we take them to Jesus, when we forgive ourselves, And when the saints of God see someone who's trying to get it right, don't let us be the instrument Satan used to cause them to stumble and fall. We lock arms with them and we walk hand in hand with them until we can get them to that place where they can be like the gathering demoniac who was touched by Jesus, where they could be sitting clothed and in their right mind. Do you receive that word on today? Give God a hand clap of praise. That's what a timely message. Because as mankind, every one of us had an unresolved issue. And the issue was this. God created us for his good pleasure created us to spend eternity with him but because of a three letter word S-I-N it created an issue that only God himself could initiate a resolution for and that issue was sin and in order to resolve that issue he sent his son (coughs) Jesus Christ down to die in our place so that he could have fellowship in a relationship with us. Amen? Amen. So this is not an emotional thing that we're asking today. What we're asking today is for you to be intent about your salvation and listen to the Holy Spirit. And if you know that you are not saved and you're in this place today, we invite you to open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm not going to say as your Lord because we have to grow into Lordship. But he's asking you to open up your heart. And if you're standing here today and you are already saved, don't look around. You should be praying.